What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to Finley Timekeeping. It's your boy, Doug. I should another the video. In this video, we're going to be doing a lot of my rackets today. I have a watch delivery to make today um, for a coworker that I sold a watch to. And I have, I'm going to just be going around and kind of giving you guys the feel of what it's like to look at pawn shops. Tulsa, Oklahoma does not have a really, really big, I'm going to say, dealers, um, watch, community, whatever. But it's decent. If you're looking for affordable pieces, and by affordable, I mean very, very affordable. You're going to see a lot of Fossil, a lot of Invicta. You're going to see a little bit of Seiko. You're going to see a lot of Michael Kors. You're going to see some Timexes. You're going to see some Casios, which are going to be kind of the standard float around brands you're going to see around here. I'm going to be going around different pawn shops, kind of showing you what I see, um, just giving you an inventory check. Um, I brought money in case I need to pick something up. I brought um, watch money in case I want to buy something for a flip. And I brought personal cash, profit money in case I want to buy something for my personal collection. I am currently wearing my Fossil FS5889. Um, this was a Christmas present. It came with a metal bracelet, but I put it on a strap because I felt like it just looked really, really good on the strap. So we're going to be hitting up pawn shops in the area, see if we can find anything, and we will take it from there. So see you guys when we get there. Uh, we're going to hit a lot of easy pawns today. There's about six of them in the area. So we're going to be hitting those. I've been to them before, but they have something new every single day. So we're going to go get those. Peace. If you guys are new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe. I like to do little watch reviews here and then. I have a watch review coming up uh, today, actually. It's going to be of a solar cycle that I have. And I'm going to be reviewing it, kind of giving a story on it, how I came about it, how I came across it, just to give you guys a view of how you can come across really good pieces and how, why I added it to my collection. So we're getting on the road now. Um, I live by downtown, so there's a couple pawn shops downtown I'm gonna be going to, and we're gonna see how they are, see what they look like, so let's go. So as you could tell, there wasn't really a lot in there. Um, it had some decent stuff, but it was nothing really eye-catching, nothing I really wanted. Uh, prices weren't low enough that I could feel like I could make a flip, or it was nothing that I feel like I would want to add to my personal collection. There was a Invicta Pro Diver, but it was quartz, and that's not something I'm looking for. I'm looking, if I find an Invicta Pro Diver, it's gotta be automatic if I'm buying it from a pawn shop. Um, because I have been looking online and there's one that I want that comes in titanium and I may be getting that one um, There was an orient in there for 93 bucks um, But it's a lot older. So the condition of it wasn't super great as well as although the automatic movement still worked You obviously don't know how much it's gonna work and it was extremely small. It isn't something I'd be able to put on my wrist so um, and I'm not sure how to flip orient quite yet. I have to kind of do more research and look at how they do on the second market especially that watch in particular so we're going to continue on it's about like 15 we're going to continue on and we're going to hit up some easy bonds i freak with these easy bonds a lot but the inventory changes every day so you never know i'm also going to go to some places i haven't been before like i've never been to this place before and we're just going to go to different places kind of see what happens see how it goes i'm still going to do that watch delivery today i'm going to show you that watch it's just a fossil grant um, but yeah, let's get to it. Also, before we go, this is the watch that's on my wrist so that you know, again, very, very clean, very, very nice analog and digital. I put it on the brown strap. The uh, class doesn't match because it comes from a different watch, but it's a lot more comfortable on the strap. So this tells me I need to find a good strap that has a gold buckle for it. So that's that. So as you can tell in that one, a lot more options, way more options, way more things going on in there. Um, the price is again, pretty high. And wiggle room, you have to, for easy pause, you have to look at the date, see if you can get some wiggle room on there. But we actually made a couple of hits. I got this Timex Easy Reader, white dial, 
ticking for 15 bucks, right? Quite a steal. This is a really good watch, fan favorite. Expansion bracelet, really, really good. I also got the same watch, but in blue. So boom, got the blue dial as well, the navy blue dial. So this navy blue dial though, isn't ticking. So I was able to get it for 10 bucks. Now, lucky for me, I actually have one at home that I can get. Um, so I can actually get into this one and you know, possibly replace this battery uh, for the free and then I could flip it. So I bought this one for 15, we sold it for 25 and make it a really easy flip. Got this one for 10, the goes to flip it for the exact same price. All right, so here we are. Um, I've got the Timex right here. I have an old battery from a Timex that I used to have. I tried to take it apart um, and put the battery back in, but it came out, couldn't do it. And then the watch was also trash, but the battery works, I know that. Then I have this tool here that's gonna help me pop the back of this open. So uh, let's go ahead and pop this thing open so that we can all see what the back of it is. And here we go. And we are bueno which means i'm going to slide this mug right in there there this one says 13 this one says 14 probably your manufacturer so i'm just going to put this mug right up in there close it up call it good it's going to start ticking we're going to be great going to again we're going to sell it we're going to make our profits and we're going to be good this is the other one again ticking ticking away so boom that was easy that is a plus i'm excited about that so i was able to get the battery seated, but I just can't, for the life of me, I cannot actually close the watch. And it's becoming a bit of an issue. So I'm actually gonna be going to a um, friend of mine who's a machinist, and he's gonna help me close that. And um, I'll get that closed, get that up. I had the other one up for sale. I'm about to eat me a little biscuit here. And then I'm going to be talking about different um watchings that i got going on um kind of how i'm going about my collection and everything kind of where i want the collection to go my next few projected pieces things like that so um yeah all right so here is the watch that we are delivering today fossil grant really really nice black dial chronograph function let's check the chronograph function boom click again Oh, yeah, it's going. There you go. Yeah, that actually click it. There it is. All right. Screw down case back. Genuine black leather band. Pretty good. Pretty solid. I like. I really like this piece. Got it for 18 bucks, actually. Got it for 18 bucks, selling it for 40 So, pretty good margin of profit there. And everything has to be a profit. So... Also, one of the things, well, I put this one, I got an interview, but also one of the things that I deal with, it's going to be a lot of trading, right? Um, people just trying to get one watch for another. And that's something I'm trying to get into as I'm learning more about watch value. So for example, uh, I'm talking to a guy on Facebook right now about a Seiko that he has. And it's a full size Seiko, about, about 42, 43 millimeters, um, stainless steel construction. Like I can see it's pretty, pretty decent. It's quartz as well, which I'm not really bugging about. And I'm trying not to come out of any cash. And I'm more willing to give him the two Seikos I have, which are one, too small for my wrist, and two, just kind of not my taste for that Seiko. Number one, I'd probably sell that Seiko for more than what I got the other two watches for. And number two, if I really like, I just add it to my personal collection and we can call it good there. So um, you really got to take these things into account because you can buy watches, sell watches, and even trade them. So it just depends on how it is. And you can't expect every trade to be a trade where you're gaining a watch that's higher in value. But, you know, you get the pieces that you like, make the moves that you can make so you can kind of keep things flowing, cash flow is king, and you gotta get that get that ball rolling. So uh, I listed that Timex that you seen earlier, so I'm waiting on bites for that, and then we'll just go on from there. So I will see you guys probably when I go make that watch delivery, so a little bit later today, peace. Good morning, you guys. Um, it's actually the next day. Um, I'm gonna make the watch delivery today. I ended up not going um, there because I had to essentially help my girlfriend put her classroom together because she is a teacher at a high school here. So um, I was doing that and then we went out to a place to eat and then I went home. So I made the watch delivery today uh, because the guy works with me. 
And so I'll be doing that this afternoon. So I'm gonna end the vlog out right here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, looking out for some more of these coming up, some more plans I'll have what I wanna do as far as being a watch reseller and things like that. Kind of my term on the market, kind of the position that I want to place myself. I'm currently wearing my uh, Orient Kamasu, which I'll show some clips of um, as the video ends. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on another one. Peace.